How we doing, everybody? Karate Combat. Um, about to start right now. So, hope you're all well. Thank you for being here on a Saturday morning. Are we live? I think we're live. Members, subscriber mo mode only. There's people in the chat. There's no one in the live. Here we go. Here we go. There we are. Wondering if I did something wrong. Uh, one second. Okay, so Karate Combat going down live. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> there they are. George St. Pierre, Baz Rutan. Couple of bloody legends. So, um, we'll chop back and forth between that when the actual fights start. Well, when the fight, the fight itself, Luke Rockhold, my old mate, God bless him. He's a good lad. Uh, I wish him all the best out there in Dubai. Hold on, let me make this a little bit bigger. So while we wait and while we talk and while we chat, um, have we got any questions? Smoking crack, Bisping, Mexican cookie. This is going to surprise you. No, I am not smoking crack. Jonathan Davila says the champ is back with a live. You're right, Jonathan. It has been a while, mate, since I've done one of these. I've been on the road, busy, 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 all over the place. Not complaining. I love it. I'm a very lucky guy. Um, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to uh, do a live for a while. Nice glasses. Thank you very much. Just got these. Uh, oh, here is Robin Black. <laughs> Robin Black. Robin Black's a really nice guy. How do we feel about the cheesy shit that comes out of his mouth, though? I like him. He's awesome. He's... Let <laughs> As I said, Robin Black's awesome. He's a really nice guy. Um, Martins, thank you, brother. Yeah, with a power stance. There he is. Napoleon, whatever your name was. No name, Adon. Dubai. I mean, fair play. Fair play to Luke Rockhold. Obviously, he used to be the middleweight champion of the world in the UFC. Then he comes out of the UFC. What did he do? He bare-knuckled Mike Perry. Oh, here we are. Here we are. We're getting down to it. We're just in time for the main event. How old is Luke now, though? Luke's got to be almost 40 years old. So, you know, does he still have it? The reality is we all slow down here and there. There's some training footage. Um, how old is Luke? Let's have a look. I'm not entirely sure. He's got to be about 39. Oh, there he is. 39 years old. Style, kickboxing. Uh, well, his style is mixed martial arts because he's really good on the ground as well. So, um, it's going to be fun. So, give me some questions and whatnot while we wait. Uh, I'll probably just live stream the fight on here and show you. Uh, Luke sleeping like Bisping hit him. Um, you can't underestimate Luke. See, here's the thing. People do. People talk shit about Luke Rockhold all the time. And, you know, they've kind of found it okay to criticize him and slag him off and, you know, undermine him as a fighter. Luke is a tremendous fighter. He's a very, very talented athlete. He's probably got leaps and bounds better since he was training with Jason Perillo. But as I say, we all get older. The reality is that I'm 45 now and I still feel like I got it. I've been working on the bag. I've been losing a bit of weight. Um, you never know. I might come and do a little karate combat myself. I might do a little boxing match myself. You never know. Uh, so anyway, while we wait for the very long intro and package, I'll do some questions. Who have I got? Have I got Luke Rockhold? Yeah, I don't know. Joe Schilling is a really, really good kickboxer himself. Look at that for a set, though. That is phenomenal. That is very cool. There's Joe Schilling right now. He's a mean bastard. Remember Joe Schilling? Joe Schilling, uh, not that guy out in the bar a couple of years ago. I think it was during COVID. Some guy was hammered in the bar, kept driving him crazy. So bing, 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 few shots laid him out cold. So he's got serious knockout power, Joe, Joe Schilling. Fought in Bellator, I think, for a while. Had some mixed results. Uh, but when, when it comes to striking, I've got bloody hiccups. When it comes to striking, the man is legit. So it's not an easy fight for Luke Rockhold, far from it, stylistically. Um, well, there's Rockhold now. Rockhold's problem is he, he's always trying to be too cool. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he's just got to, you know... Stop trying to put on a night. Oh, yeah. 
just be himself. Oh, who's this dude? Rockov running in. You've put the gloves on during UFC 300 and you were feeling the itch. Jay Miller, you're absolutely right. I put them on. I was like, whoa, ho, ho. I haven't had a pair of these on for a long time. I tell you what, fair play to Karate Combat because that looks absolutely sick, doesn't it? That looks phenomenal. I was speaking to the guy that runs Karate Combat. Um, what's his name? President Awesome. Uh, he's a great guy. There's actually an interview on this channel. If you want to see that, talking about everything they're doing at Karate Combat. Here we go. We've got a super chat. Ryan says, Aljamain Sterling came out and said he was more nervous for the Qatar fight than any other he's had. What's the most nervous you were for a scrap? Yeah, probably because for Aljamain Sterling, because he got knocked out in his last fight. You know, anytime you step back in there when you've just been knocked out, there's, uh, there's going to be some skeletons in the closet. There's going to be a bit of psychological trauma. Anyway, never mind that. So here's Luke Rockhold. Is Perillo there? I don't think he is. I would have seen it on Instagram. Um, most nervous. Most nervous. I don't know, mate. I don't know. You get nervous before all of them. You get. I must admit, when I fought Dan Henderson the second time, I was kind of nervous. So here we go. So they're in the center of the karate combat pit. Here we go. I'm going to put it on mute so you, I, you can just do my commentary. So, and I probably shouldn't do this, John, but it is what it is. It's just a last-minute stream. We might get demonetized, whatever. So Luke's really, really good at a range. For Joe Schilling, if he pressures him and gets on the inside, obviously it takes away that range, takes away those long-range weapons. But Schilling being very aggressive. Low kick from Rockhold. There it is. Take down. The rules in karate combat, as soon as it hits the ground, there's got to be strikes involved. So there was an easy takedown for Rockhold, but it was wasted energy. Exchanging some low kicks. Rockhold's always had those hands kind of low. That's why I was able to catch him with that left hook, if you recall. Look at that. I love that pit. See the way Shilly just runs up it like that? That's awesome. So Rockhold's the bigger guy, the stronger guy, the better wrestler, the better grappler, the more experienced guy and had greater success in combat sports than Joe Schilling. Um, but a lot of those skills, they're kind of out the window now, you know, in karate combat. It doesn't matter. Nice head kick from uh, Luke Rockhold there. So obviously Rockhold trying to take that space away. Early on him, big left kick. Yeah, from Southpaw's desk too. That's Rockhold's best weapon. That long range left high kick to the body. Uh, um, are you intoxicated, Michael? We got uh, George uh, Sapir on uh, the commentary as well. Love George. The guy is a, a, a legend. So, there's that head kick again from Luke. You got to set it up though. He's starting to get a little too reliable on that. And when I say starting to, I mean throughout his career, he's kind of everybody knows you got to watch that left high kick. Hands low from Luke. I don't think he's getting tired already, but he's got to mix things up a little bit. He's just throwing the left high kick. Use those long range weapons, Luke. And for Joe Schilling, keep pressure and keep doing what he's doing. Where is this, Simon says? Simon, it's in Dubai. Look at the background, bro. Ooh. It's very mortal combat, isn't it? I know it's karate combat. See, there's a big amount of energy that Luke just used there. W Mike stealing their content. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm probably going to get demonetized, but I'm a fan of karate combat. So, you know, I'm promoting their sport, you know. Do you think Luke needs the money or just Luke wants to compete? It's probably a bit of both. You know what I'm saying? Whilst you've got the ability to generate cash from doing what you love, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you take that opportunity while you've got it? And of course, he loves the sport. I mean, the man's a fighter. It's his best skill set. So why wouldn't you use that? You know, which is a question I ask myself every day. 45 years old, I still got one left in the tank. Come on, make me some offers, people. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm serious or joking or what. This is lit. Yes, Dave Bowman, to use that terminology... It is late. So we've got a minute break. So we'll just uh, leave that there a second. Joe Schilling's running up the pit walls. Not looking tired at all. Do a question or two. Luke Rockhold is gassed. He, he looked a little laboured. 
He looked a little laboured, to be fair. This setup looks better than a cage. Well, it's a cool setup. It's a different setup for sure. Um, is this also brought up by the Saudis? Well, no, it's Dubai, isn't it? So it's not Saudi Arabia. Um, they're different countries, mate. They're different countries. UFC Manchester, one last fight. <laughs> hey, don't turn to me, mate. Okay, we've got another super chat. Abby Wagner, the fight space. Luke fighting for a knockout and no risk of demonetization. Karate combat is free use. Do your trilogy with Luke in karate combat. I would. I would. Karate combat. <laughs> Give me a shout. I'll fight Luke. We'll do the trilogy. One last time. Let's go to Dubai. Um, all right, so the fight's back on. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. The sound of their strikes, I hope on TV you guys can hear this. The sound of their strikes are insane. I mean, it's electrifying. This, this has to be one of my favorite fights ever for Cardi Combat. Well, oh. It's just a left kick from Rockhold over and over. Yeah, but it's, it's freaking shilling, right? <laughs> He's getting pressured. He's getting backed up. Use those straight shots, Luke. Schilling's fighting the correct fight. He's pressuring him. He's throwing to the kicks. He's keeping bringing the hands down low, throwing to the legs, I mean. Um, but Rockhold, just not enough output. There it is, the high kick, the low kick to the high, classic combination. But as he's older, as it's karate combat, and no disrespect, of course, is he pushing himself? You know, because for this, for Luke, it might just be a payday. You never know, because he does seem like he's tired already. You know, are you going to push yourself for a match against Joel Schilling in Dubai for karate combat like you would in a world title fight? I don't know that answer. I would, but look at this. Schilling with the takedown. Luke, if you lose this, you're making me look bad. So get it together, buddy. Get it together. Who do we think won that first round, by the way? Probably Schilling. Schilling looks a bit snappier in his punches as well. And there's a takedown for Luke. Gets on top. A couple of shots there. One minute 20. Let's have a listen to the commentary from a, 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 a George Tempiara. That kick punch uh, combo works very well for Rocco. Yeah, but the second one, though, he blocked it. It's just one. He learned from the first. Rocco is actually wearing a bit of damage on his nose. So there's a takedown for Rocco. He's got to get active, though. He's got to get busy. There are good shots. Now Rocco is doing a great, a great oh, job. Somebody's leak. Is that Rocco leaking? Should I think it is Rocco bleeding. It's Rockhold's nose that's bleeding. Oh, it's leaking. I can't see particularly which strike of Schilling's landed, but across, you know, those crosses. Yep. It's the most. And it could be bad because when you're bleeding from the nose, now you're forced to, to breathe by, by the by the mouth, yeah. nice. and you don't oxygenate your your body very well because it, it, the mouth, the breathing from from the mouth is not optimal, is not efficient. Nice question mark hit by Luke. We've seen in the pit in a while. So Rockhold's nose leaking blood in a big way. Closing ten seconds here, round number two. Long way still to go in this bout. Oof. Yeah, those are powerful kicks. Yeah, power to shin to shin. Yeah. Anybody know how many rounds they do? I don't know how many rounds it is. Is it five? I think it's three minutes round rounds, right? I'll do a few questions while we wait for that. Uh let's have a look. Where's my cursor? Jeez Louise. There we go. There we go. Uh throw a push kick, Luke. Set it up better. Okay, all right. We've got some experts in the chat, guys. Uh, Bisping, are you going to be doing a stream for Haney versus Garcia tonight? Yeah, I think I will, actually. I'm very interested. Ryan Garcia, if you saw that one, missed weight by 3.2 pounds, chugging a beer. The man's out of his mind. He's been talking a lot of crazy stuff online lately as well. So I'm surprised that fight's even going to go ahead. But still, hey, he obviously passed all the medicals. New York is not an easy place to get licensed in. So, Levi Kinkhead says, if the UFC would do a Legends point sparring series, think you and some of the other long-toothed guys would be game? Yeah, I do, but who wants to see that? Who wants to see us doing point sparring? I know it might be fun and a little bit of nostalgia and stuff like that. Who knows? Maybe I'll start promoting that myself. Bisping's touch sparring 
Ultimate touch sparring. Three three-minute rounds with option, optional sudden death. Thank you, Abby Wagner. So here we go then. So apparently this is the third and final round. Let's put some commentary on from the guys. The legendary Baz Rutan and the legendary George St. Pierre. There's others there as well, but I got so much respect for both those guys. Is that all it is? Three threes? I'll do fucking three threes of this. With one eye. I'm sure they don't care in Dubai. I wouldn't be surprised if he does it. Joe Schilling with his son in the corner this evening. Decent little shot by Luke there. There's a lot of clinching, a lot of grappling. And it's wasting a lot of time when they're clinching because grappling isn't a big part of karate combat. Nice liver kick by Luke just landed. Returned by Schilling. Yeah, it's a really, really close fight. Probably so far, I don't know, because Rockhold's got on top a few times. Who are you guys? Who you guys got winning? In Dubai with one eye. That rhymed, Mike. Aye, it did. Um, are you going to do this with the Devin Garcia fight? I think I am Buzzards Cry, member for 23 months. Sign up to the memberships. I'll do some videos for you today, actually. Massive swing by Joe Schilling. Luke puts him down easy, gets on top, up kicks by Joe Schilling. Yeah, Luke ain't too tired yet, though. I mean, three threes, that's pretty easy to get through. You should have seen me on the bag yesterday. I was flying. Luke's got the arms in the air, though. He's tired, taking some deep breaths. If this is the last round, one minute 30 left. So a big push from both men required. Little front snap kick from Luke. Oh! Luke gets him down. Drops him, right hook counter. That could be it, and that's it. Over. Luke Rockhold with the finish. Around one minute left in round three. Huge right hook counter from Rockhold. Drops him. Let's have a listen. Wow. Uh, Joe Schilling said, good shot, mate. Wow. Fair play to Rockhold. Fair play, man. Still got it. Blood sport. Still got it. Nice. Hey, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for him. It's always nice to see former opponents, guys that leave the UFC, continue to have success, make money. Let's have a look here. So, Shillin, he just left his right side open, or left side, should I say. Big right hook, floors him, almost face plants him. Look at that, boom, good shot. It was a hook, but their arm was kind of straight. Well done. Luke Rockhold, Karate Combat Go. Let's go. Jamie, U-E-U-A. Terry Smiles, what's up, Terry? Welcome to uh, the membership club. So what's Rockhold saying? Let's have a listen. It's okay. You can lick it if you want. <laughs> Is, who's that? I didn't think Rockhold had any kids. Is that a nephew? Wow, that's a shot right there for Karate Combat. Hasbullah is not going to like that. Oh, it's Hasbullah's alternative, should I say. <laughs> it's not his kid. I'm like, I don't think Rockhold's got any kids. I'm like, that's a pimps out kid if it is, rocking in with the fur mink, you know, with the mink coat, you know. Well done to Luke. Congratulations and well done to Karate Combat. Probably another very, very successful event for them. It's a fun show. It's a fun show, so keep an eye on those guys. Love you, Bispin. Bispin Rock All 3. You never know. Is that his nephew? I know. I know. I'm an idiot. Well, I don't know. It looked like a child, didn't it? You know. Uh, Rock All by Ralph Polo Punch. Yeah. Hasbullah's nemesis. There you go. Nice setup. It is a nice setup. Karate Combat I've got right there. It's a beautiful setup. Let's listen. Rock All, big right hand. Gets it done in the third round. I mean, how cool does that look? There's President Awesome right there with the bald head in the background. Let's have a listen to the interview. Because this is where Luke struggles. You had him scouted out. You played the game. Great strategy. Finished with the knockout. It's Dean Thomas. I mean, three weeks notice. A little more of an, another another infection I got this time. It wasn't the greatest like setup, but you know, hey, got the job, got the job done. Just he just got the job, he got the job done. This is great right here. 
an nice right hook, though. Nice, Beautiful know? right hook. Boom. Got to touch yourself in different ways, man. Never get comfortable. The nose. How's the nose? I mean, he hit you with a right hand. Not again. I was like, not my nose. We're going to do this again. Yeah, he squared me pretty good. I was like, I got too relaxed. I thought I had his time, like his distance real good. And he was real relaxed. Hit, hit that straight shot. But, you know, I knew I, I knew I could find my time. I just put relaxation, man. There's his nephew. Really normally find <laughs> so you talked about it. Obviously, this is your first time here in the pit. Would you like to fight here in the pit again? And if so, is there anybody that you would like to fight? There's only one man I want to fight in this pit. And that's Leo Tomachita. And you're lucky oh. because they don't allow elbows. So no more fucking nightmares about the elbows. Bring it. Let's see what you got. Let's see what your paychecks look like. Bring out that checkbook. Leoto, I know you need a payday, motherfucker. Come get it. Well, Luke, what a pleasure to have you here in the pit. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your winner in the main event, Luke Rocco. Ah, congratulations, Luke. Calls out Leoto Machida. If you recall, he destroyed Leoto Machida in the UFC, took him down, got top position, and just absolutely molested him with elbows. It was it was a vicious beatdown. And then I think in the next fight, he beat Wyman to become the champion. Well done to Luke. And there is the power stance. Robin Black, shout out Robin. Anyway, so let's uh, turn this into a little old regular live. Um, give me some questions, guys. Wasn't a left up Larry though, was it? It certainly bloody was not, boys and girls. It certainly was not. Um... How did we like UFC 300 last week? What an event that was. Hasbullah versus Bisping versus Rockhold and that small guy. Do I, did I think Rockhold was going to call me out? No, I didn't think that. Oh, let's have a look at this. This is interesting. The strikes, the stats. 63 thrown, 35 landed for Rockhold. So landed 27 versus 35. Kicks, 20. So Rocco was way busier in general. Head strikes, 42. Oh, fair play, man. Fair play. He was busy. No wonder he was breathing a little bit. And I didn't know he only took it on a few weeks' notice. So fair play. Well done, Luke. Stepped up, flew out to Dubai. Three weeks' notice. Got the job done. Finishes Joel Schilling. A great striker. A very decorated fighter as well. So f well done. Well done. Uh, Michael. You got your new prosthesis in yet? I don't. I have my old one in yet, but I don't have my new one in yet. I'm going to be putting a full video out on YouTube, but that was just a little excerpt. So I've been for about three appointments now. Every time I go, I'm documenting a little, little bit more, and then I'll put it all together, and I'll give you a, a full insight to the whole thing, the way they do the molds and everything, the painting, all the rest of it, and uh, the story of how it happened. So anyway, there you go. Uh, Rockhold just hit him with that Potan left hook. He did, da, but it was the right. That Poulton landed. No, no, no. Rockhold landed the right. Poulton landed the left. Bisping, Rebecca follows a page called Kiddos Getting Slightly Hurt. Care to comment? Well, Piston Jab, if you're trying to insinuate that my wife is some kind of sickle, then um, you're wrong, mate. She's the kindest, most caring woman on this planet. So go... Uh... You're barking up the wrong tree, bro. Uh, Jimmy says, were you serious about potentially doing karate combat or was that a joke? I, I mean, I'd have a go. I'd have a go, of course I would. I don't know if I could contractually with the UFC, but I don't know what they're paying. Three three-minute rounds. Three three-minute rounds. I took the standing on my head. I did eight rounds on the bags yesterday. So, you know... I could be tempted. I could be tempted. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? It's not mixed martial arts. It's not quite as intensive in the training and things like that. I think I'd have a go. I think I'd have a go. Do you think Poirier can get it done against Islam Mahachev? It's a tough one, isn't it? It's a very, very tough one. I, I, I wish Dustin all the best because it would be the perfect end to such a storied career if Dustin Poirier could get the job done. It really would. Because um, he's unbelievable. Dustin Poirier, I, we're all fans. We're all fans. Never been able to be the undisputed champion. To take it off Islam in a kind of weird way, weird way get revenge over Habib. And to become the champion, undisputed, after so many ups and downs. 
getting knocked out against Gagey, that'd be a beautiful. It'd be poetic. It really would. Uh, but it's tough, man. It's tough. Mashida Karate all the way. Let's have a look at some of these highlights here. So this is some highlights throughout the night. I'll give you a bit of sound. Oh, we've got a bit of soundtrack. Nice spinning back fist. Good hip throw. Ushiro Mawashi Gary there. A little kiss on the head for the president. A little right hand for the fallen. Oh, he just missed with that one, didn't he? Nice foot sweep. Bosh. Foot to the face. Boom. Flying knee. Nice. Oh, that's a good right hand. And there's Luke eating one, landing one, giving one, dropping one, winning the fight. Well done, Luke Rockhold. Fair play, man. Fair play. You know, it takes balls to step out there. It really does. So well done to him. So anyway, that's it. That is all she wrote. Karate combat is over. Um, there was a thing this morning that you might have seen from Dana White talking about UFC 300. Uh, should we play it? Let's have a look. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Pause that right there. This is kind of interesting. So UFC 300. Boom. Let's have a bit of sound. What's up, guys? As we rolled into UFC 300, uh, the MMA experts weighed in on what they thought of UFC 300. And for all the fighters that were on this card, when I said this is the greatest card ever assembled in the history of combat sports, this is what the media thought of you guys. And he's right, because a lot of people talk shit. They made it their badge of identity, their badge of honor to say, oh, UFC 300's awful. And I always said, I'm not saying I told you so. I'm like, look at the card. What are you talking about? It is phenomenal. Anyway, so this is Dana White just saying, kiss my ass. It's hilarious, to be fair. UFC 300 makes no sense. Is any fight on this card 300 <laughs> worthy? Papa. No. This is the most diabolically disappointing UFC 300 announcement ever. Jesse! It feels kind of thrown together. Of this course. Is the culmination of the head honcho. We were continually told that it's going to knock your socks off. Shut it's going to be Barry. amazing. What did Dana say about this? Right. We're going to blow their socks off. I wanted my jaw to hit the fucking ground. I did expect a little bit more from the company to blow us away. Nobody did got you? blown away. Nobody. Really? We need people that know the sport to be running the show because this is pathetic. UFC 300. People that know the sport to be running the show. They invented the sport, okay? Martial arts has been around for a long time and obviously uh, various styles of combat sports. Uh, it used to be called Vale Tudo in Brazil and of course there's always been fights, okay, all over the the world as long as man has been on the planet um but they started the ufc well the ufc did in 2003 they bought it in 2001 we need people that know the sport they are the sport fucking hell the worst promoted fight card ever worst put together fight card ever justin gaethje and max holloway for the bmf title which i think is the corniest nonsense on earth Wait, Corniest nonsense turned out to be the best fight of the night, probably one of the best fights of all time and one of the greatest knockouts in all of fight combat sports history. Unbelievable. So this is this is good, to be fair. You can't blame him. Zhang against Zhao Nian. China's going to get all excited, and I don't think anyone else really cares. UFC 300 will be a disaster. Are huh. you kidding me, Dana White? <laughs> the most monumental card that there's ever been. You've had a whole year to prepare for this. Aren't you trying to make sales? Don't you want people to actually buy the pay-per-view? This ain't it. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a regular decent pay-per-view. Wow. 
I'll tell you what, fair play to the editing team over at uh, the production team at UFC because they make f some shit that makes you just want to go and watch that all over again. Anyway, um, it was a tremendous event and I was happy to be there for just, um, you know, playing my small part working for ESPN. Apparently, the ESPN uh, broadcast as well smashed all kinds of records and things like that. Top to bottom, everyone that fought on that card, congratulations. It was phenomenal. It was something special. But people just love to talk shit. Right? They just love to hate on the man, and the man on, in this in instance is the UFC. They're the biggest team in town by far. They are the sport to a, you know, for the most part, they are the sport of mixed martial arts. It is, you know, everyone else is kind of, you know, they, they, they were inspired by the UFC and they're trying to replicate their success and piggyback on the back of it. Um, some people like to talk shit because that's always the way, but it was a phenomenal event from start to finish. You know, uh, the Max Holloway, Justin Gagey fight was just phenomenal. Max Holloway stole the show in many ways. And you know what I really liked about UFC 300 was that the, if you break it down, there was a really significant thing that happened because UFC 300, yes, and in the main event, Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill was an intriguing fight. It was a light heavyweight title fight. Um, and that was top of the bill, of course. But UFC 300 was about a celebration of the sport for the promotion itself, for all the fans, for all the fighters, for the industry, and for the whole world. Mixed martial arts, UFC 300. What a milestone they have reached. And the significance of that is, is if you think about it, look at the main event. Alex Pereira, two years ago, roughly, maybe give or take a month or two, he wasn't even in the UFC. He wasn't a part of the UFC, but now he's headlining the biggest card and he's one of the biggest stars in all of mixed martial arts now. The point that I'm making is, is that throughout the history of the UFC, there's been lots of different eras. If you think back to the early days, obviously there was Hoist Gracie, right? He was the big breakout star for UFC 1 and so on. Then we had the likes of Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz, you know. And the the, the, the thoughts were always, what, are the, the, what is the sport going to do? What is the UFC going to do when these guys retire? Of course, then we had other people coming along. We had Quinton Rampage Jackson, Sugar Rashad Evans, George St. Pierre. You know, there's always the new people. Holly Holm, uh, Ronda Rousey. Conor McGregor, of course, came over and absolutely took over the sport. And now we've got new stars coming through all the time. And Alex Pereira, the latest one, two years ago, not even in the UFC. And I think that's the great thing about this sport. So congratulations to everyone that, that got the chance to uh, compete on that epic card. As I say, I was there working for ESPN, so I was proud to play my little part. And UFC 100, of course. I was on that fight card. I got knocked out in stunning fashion, but it's a part of history, and I'm still proud that I was on it. UFC 200, I was the champion of the world, and I was actually angling for a fight with uh, Daniel Cormier when John Jones tested positive. I thought I'd throw my name in the mix. I knew I wouldn't get it, but I thought I'd give it a go. So 100, I was fighting. 200, I was a champion. And 300, I was a commentator. So in that weird little way, that little humble brag type of thing, I'm very, very proud of that. So anyway... There we go. Um, let's see what's going on in the world. Tonight we got... Um, who is it? Ryan Garcia taking on Devin Haney. 0161. Cheers, Mike B. All right, buddy. Thank you, FC. Hope you're well. What do I think about Colby versus Gary? Oh, God. All right, we'll talk about that. Jake Paul offers two UFC legends $10 million as he searches for MMA opponent in the PFL. Um, I saw that yesterday. I was going to talk about this on a video because the thing is, Jake Paul's just got to insert himself into everything, hasn't he? Because Masvidal and Diaz are going to box. So now we say, I'll fight the winner in MMA. I'll offer them $10 million. Apparently, I heard a lot of platforms offered Diaz and Masvidal a tremendous amount of money. To, to, for this boxing fight to take place in their promotion or whatever. And he turned down a lot of money. Uh, Jake Paul, as I say, they're getting a bit of success. They're getting a little bit of hype. So he's got to insert himself because fighting a 58-year-old obviously isn't getting him the attention that he wants. Uh, but the, the thing is, this is interesting. If you look it up, in fact, I'll find it right now and I'll show you. Gegard Mousasi. I'm sure you all know who Gegard Mousasi is. Uh, brilliant fighter, okay? He's been complaining this week uh, because the PFL won't book him 
because essentially they can't afford him. Hold on, get rid of this. No, I don't want to subscribe. Hold on, let me make that a little bit smaller so you guys can see. Here we go, hold on. Gegard Musashi lash, lashes out at the PFL over lack of communication, refusal, refusal to book him since buying Bellator. He goes on to say, the problem is we can't get a hold of them. They refuse to answer us back. I've been training, I've been ready, but like I said, they don't promote me or people think I'm retired. People don't know. After my fight, Fabian Edwards fought twice and since then they don't even talk to us. Uh, where does he say it? I tried to fight Derek Brunson. Anyway, just to paraphrase what he says, uh, I, well, you make too much money. I would get back to you after I talk to them because they cannot let you hang like this. Basically, Gegard Musas is claiming that he makes too much money so the PFL won't pay for him. But they're going to pay Masvidal and Nate Diaz 10 million to fight Jake Paul. And all Jake Paul needs is six months of MMA training. Listen, if the fight stays on the feet, I'll give Jake Paul a very, very good chance. In fact, he beat Nate Diaz in boxing. But it isn't uh, a boxing fight, is it? Anyway, we've got some super chats. Can I get a shout out, Mike? This is James Neal. I've been watching you since The Ultimate Fighter back when I was 14. Big up all your career in all walks. Well, thank you, James. That is very, very kind. So you've been a long time supporter. Well, thank you, sir. I do appreciate that very much. Um, yeah, in the ring, out the ring, all the rest of it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, James. Cody White says, Mike, would you ever fight Rockhold again in karate combat to settle the rubber match? It's not something I'd say no to straight away, and it's not something I'd say yes to straight away, but if they came to me with a decent offer, it's certainly something I'd probably think about. I'm not saying I would, you know, because I'm very happy, retired, but, I, you know, I do, I do miss it. So, True Mancunian says, I love Dana's video calling out all the crybabies that said UFC 300 would not be successful. I know, it's ridiculous. As I say, people just like to talk shit for the sake of it because, you know, they got nothing better to do or they want to get clicks or whatever. Negativity sells. Negativity attracts viewers, right? I don't trash fighters. I mean, listen, I'll give a fair, honest review of their fights. I'll critique them. Uh, but I'm not just going to say, this is a load of shit. These guys aren't good. They're not talented. What is this card and all this type of thing? But if you do that, people want to click on that because people don't necessarily want to watch another human being celebrating another human. For some reason, it's something within our nature. Human beings generally, they want to see people shitting on other people. They want to see negativity. That's why the tabloids, that's why the newspapers, it's scandalous headlines because that sells, you know? So that's why people do this because it gets them clicks. And half the time, I bet they don't even believe it themselves. Anyway, all depends on the commission, I guess. Well, it does, you know, but it's not mixed martial arts. And if we're in Dubai or China or Russia or somewhere like that, commissions ain't going to give a shit, bro. Uh, anyway, so top stories. TJ Dillashaw was rooted for ex-rival Cody Garbrandt. Okay. Jake Paul's $10 million offer. Jamal Hill. Oh, Jamal Hill going up against Khalil Roundtree Jr. UFC 3 or 3 International Fight Week. Let's talk about that. How do we feel about that? John, put a poll up on that, please, mate. If you're there, shout out John Brannigan. That's my editor in the background, by the way. He's the guy that edits these videos, does all the thumbnails. So give him a follow on Instagram, at John Brannigan. And uh, yeah, John, put a poll up. Khalil Rowdtree, Jamal Hill, who do we think wins? Because Jamal obviously just lost to Alex Pereira in his first fight after coming back from tearing his Achilles tendon. Khalil Rountree Jr. is doing big things right now. Last time we saw him, he took out Anthony Smith. Anthony took the fight on really short notice. And, uh, you know, that one kind of bit him in the backside a little bit. So that's an interesting fight. And if Khalil Rountree Jr. can get the job done over Jamal Hill, who just lost at UFC 300, he's going to be, he's, gonna, he's inserting himself into a title fight. He's kind of not mentioned. He's not mentioned in these talks. It's all Yiri. It's all, you know... <laughs> It's all, I can't think of the other names. Alexander Rakic, he just got beat though. Let's have a look at UFC rankings. Hold on. UFC rankings. No, that is not rankings. That is UFC subreddit. There we go. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So if we go down. So Pereira, it's all Yiri. Magomed Ankalaev, he's got to be next. Jamal just lost. Jan Blahovic. Rakic just lost, Krilov, Johnny Walker, Khalil Rantree Jr. at number eight. If he can take out Jamal Hill at number three after Magomed Ankalaev, 
he should get a shot. So if you've got any questions, give them to me because I'm going to give you 20 more minutes of my time uh, because I'm going to be a father this weekend. Lucas, my youngest child, obviously, um, he needs a father. And I've been away for the last few weeks. I've been on the road all over the place. Next week, I'm on the road again. Then I come back, I'm, I'm in Vegas. Then I'm, I'm off somewhere else. I'm hardly going to be home all summer. I'm going to be shooting a movie, so I'm going to be away. So I'm home for a weekend. Lucas, is, we let him have a little lie-in. Lazy son, it's half 12. He's getting up, he's getting showered now, and then we're going to go out. Not sure what we're going to do. Might go fishing or something like that. So any questions, give it to me, baby, because you've got 20 minutes to ask it. True Mancunian, we did that one. Uh, let's have a look on the poll. What do you guys think? 207 votes. Can't see the winner. This is the problem with bloody StreamYard. Anyway, close poll. Let's have a look. Um, Mikey B, how do you think a hypothetical fight be between Hamzat and Shavkat would go? Yeah, I don't know, mate. I don't know. We don't know what Hamzat... We don't know what his ceiling is yet. We know he's a phenomenal wrestler, phenomenal fighter in general, very aggressive, limited gas tank, but that's because he doesn't pace himself and that's what makes him so exciting and that's what makes him so effective because he doesn't care. I think he is one of the best wrestling talents we've seen. Even Bo Nickel, who, as we know on paper, is one of the best wrestlers that we've seen in a long time. Look at those takedowns against... Um, Cody Brundage. Some of those were hard to get and they weren't the cleanest. When Hamza was against Kamara Usman in the first round, they were really, really dominant takedowns. So that's why Hamza kind of gets gassed because the expenditure, he doesn't care. He's putting a lot of horsepower into all of those moves. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. I mean, against Shavkat, it's a clash of styles. Anyway, that was cool. Thanks for showing the Rock Hall fight. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known it was on. See, Karate Combat, and look, you owe me money. I'm, I'm publicizing you. What do I think of Jonathan Haggerty? I don't know who he is. David C. I have no idea. I agree. I'm gonna be the. I'm gonna have to go with Bo over Hamza. Okay, okay. How do I see Chandler versus McGregor going? Oof. How do you guys see it? Chandler versus McGregor, what do you think? John, put a poll up on that, please, mate. I'm going to open up the chat here so I can see uh, the results to the polls and stuff like that. So I'll put a poll up. McGregor versus Chandler. Um, who do we have winning? John's messaging me now. Oh, yeah, it was 52% Roundtree. Um, yeah, put a poll up, please, John, if you can, mate. Um, I'll just put this up here. Live. We've got 1,600 people. I'll just pop the chat out here. No, that's not it. Where, how do I pop the chat out? Oh, here it is. Pop out chat, Bosch. Khalil Roundtree. You guys had him winning. Thanks for the content, champ. Thank you, Terry Bailey. Thank you for, for the support. What's up, Bisping? Who wins between a prime Rockhold and a current Strickland? The prime Rockhold. Uh, enjoy the podcast and content. Could you give a shout Shout out to my beautiful girlfriend, Savannah. Cheers. Enjoy the family time. Jacob, thank you very much. Savannah, hope you're well. Savannah, big shout out to you and uh, enjoy your weekends. Liam Smollen says, did I ever cross paths with Lee Murray? I did on a few occasions. Uh, I fought on Cage Rage in London. Some of my earlier fights were there. Uh, Lee Murray fought on there. Lee Murray fought Anderson Silva in a fantastic fight. Uh, didn't get the job done, but showed a lot of toughness. I fought Lee Murray's very, very close friend, Mark the Beast Epstein. I beat him twice for the Cage Rage World Championship. Uh, I use World Championship. I use that term loosely. <laughs> Should have been a British title. Although they did bring in a lot of fights from Japan and places like that. So I was a champion of the world. Uh, but yeah, I fought Mark Epstein twice in my third and my fifth fight. Knocked him out both times. Um... But, uh, yeah, no, no, bumped into Lee Murray. We had a good little chat. He made me laugh a couple of times. He was an animal. And he should be out of prison by now. Let's have it right. He should be out of prison by now. Okay, let's have a look down here, see what we got. Three or three main event is going to be a stoppage. Yeah, I think it will be. I think for Conor McGregor, 
he's got a very good chance in rounds one and two. After that, he's going to go downhill, I think, I believe. Three years away from the sport is a long time. Three years away from the sport when you're stinking rich is an even longer time. You know what I'm saying? The amount of distractions that he has, the lack of motivation that he would have. So, you know, I, I wish McGregor the best. Uh, and if he can come back after three years and beat somebody like Michael Chandler, hey, he deserves all the respect and credit in the world. I guess uh, we shall we shall wait and see. We've got a member, Simon Hlalgamaiga. Thank you very much. We've got a super chat here from True Mancunium. I love Dana's video calling out the crybabies. We did that one already. So we've got a poll up there. Conor McGregor stoppage, Chandler stoppage, McGregor decision, Chandler decision. So far... You guys all got Michael Chandler via stoppage. The problem is with that for Michael Chandler, Gary McLennan, I'll get to that question in just a second. Problem is for Michael Chandler is that he doesn't always fight with the highest fight IQ. Look at the fight he had against Dustin Poirier. Unbelievable. He just ran at Dustin Poirier and was cracking him with right hand after right hand. You know, if, if Chandler was smart, the approach would be to try and clinch and get a takedown early. Right, stifle Conor McGregor, get him past round two, get McGregor tired, and then go for the knockout. But will Chandler do that? I don't know. And McGregor's got that left hand. He's dangerous. He's very explosive. But will he be the same? There's a lot of questions, and the only way we know the answers to them is um, to have them fight, which goes down pretty quickly, actually, and I'm very excited for it. The sport of mixed martial arts is a better place when McGregor's around. Nobody brings the hype, the buzz, the thrill, the atmosphere like a McGregor fight. The energy fight week is just unbelievable. So, And you know we're all going to be tuning in. Gary McLennan says the best way to lose weight for a pick in five weeks. Uh, well, you've got to get active, Gary. There's no secret to it. You've got to get active. You can't out-exercise a bad diet, though. So the, the diet is the main thing. And if you want to drop weight quickly, do a keto diet. The keto diet, you will drop a rid ridiculous amount of weight. You will. But as soon as you start eating carbs again, you'll start to put it on. But if you do a strict keto diet, if you cut out all carbohydrates and sugars, then your body starts to use the fat in your body as the energy source. But it's very, very hard to actually get into ketosis, and it's very hard to be disciplined enough. I do keto diets, but I don't think I've ever been in ketosis once. What I mean by that is I generally use that as a basis. You know, I try and limit my amount of carbohydrates. Don't eat any processed foods. If you want to lose weight, cut out all of the alcohol. The alcohol, and don't drink sodas and shit like that. Don't drink orange juice, apple juice. That's just pure sugar. Um, lots of steaks, lots of eggs, lots of chicken, lots of salads without all the dressings and fancy shit on. you got to run. You gotta lift weights. You gotta burn ex, uh, burn calories. What you should do is run and lift weights in the morning, and then in the evening go for a walk, and follow a strict diet. Five five weeks, mate. Five weeks, you could drop fifteen to twenty pounds of actual fat. So good luck. Anyway, nutrition corner. Professional sports enterprise says, "What's up, Mike? Been watching you. Oh, we did that one. What the hell?" We did that one, you cheeky bugger. You're squeezing in those chats. Uh, okay, so you all have Conor McGregor. 47% of you think McGregor gets knocked out against Michael Chandler or a stoppage of some form. I'm going to end that poll. Send it. There we go. Oh, dear. Bad foods, bad foods taste so good. It's a cruel world. Well, you're right. Bad foods do taste good. Junk foods do taste good. I mean, come on, we all love a cheeseburger. I love fried chicken. I'm on a big fried chicken vibe at the minute. I can't get enough of fried chicken, man. But good foods can taste good. I'm very lucky I have a wife that cooks for me. She prepares food with love, and she does. Um, Jesus Christ, fuck this. I asked 50 times. Just booked the fucking 265 pound plus division already. All right, Todd, calm down, mate. Calm down. Good foods can taste good, mate. I have a fry-up every day, and that is healthy. I have chicken sausages, bacon, eggs, mushrooms if you want. Delicious. Uh, water weight from carbs, walking burns fat. 
Yeah. For every gram of carbohydrate that you eat, your body temporarily holds on to four grams of water. So if you're eating a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of your puff, a lot of your bloat, a lot of your weight is made up from excessive water. So you eliminate all the carbohydrates intake and then your body will piss out and pass all the excess bloat, all the water. Okay, but when you start eating carbohydrates again, you're then going to absorb some more water. There's a bit of science for you. Mike, I'm rocking hard. I'm thinking, I'm rock hard thinking of Taporia versus Holloway. I mean, come on, what a fight that's going to be. Lee Murray's still got 10 years left. Is that true, Biohazard? Man, 10 years. Lee Murray got sent down when I got, or he got, he got arrested, should I say, when I got out of the Ultimate Fighter. And he's still got 10 years. Wow. What kind of bacon? Hugh G. Rection says. Proper bacon, mate. Turkey bacon, chicken bacon, or normal bacon. Normal bacon. You know, animal fats are good for you. All right? Bollocks to what all these stupid government studies are telling you. Eggs don't give you cholesterol. Eggs are nature's version of a multivitamin. Every vitamin you need are in eggs. Right? So get as many eggs as you can. And animal fats are good for you. Obviously, too much of anything is bad for you, you know, but all bloody, uh, all, I mean, the government just came out, what did they say? There was something recently, that is, oh, oh, keto diet, no, fasting, fasting is going to give you a heart disease, fasting is going to give you heart disease, that is utter bullshit, utter, utter bullshit, think about how, how human beings evolved over generations and generations, right, did we always have access to food? No, we didn't, is heart disease at an all-time high? Yes, because <clears throat> we have access to processed foods 24-7. We just got to get off the couch, walk to the kitchen, open a cupboard, and eat some shit that has been processed. Unnatural products, okay? Listen, I'm not lecturing. We all love to eat some, some treats here and there. But to say for the government to come out and say that fasting from not eating constantly is going to give you heart disease is absolutely insane. Eat for, eat for eight hours a day, from 12 to 8 p.m. That's not even fasting. That's just called not being a greedy fat bastard that's sticking food in your mouth. And then go to bed. Anyway, there you go. What about eating my girlfriend's eggs? <laughs> Enjoy, brother. All natural. Garcia or Haney. It's hard to not go with Haney, isn't it? It's hard to not to. Exactly. Eat like two or one meals. Exactly. I have two meals. I have my lunch. I have my dinner. Sometimes I might have a bit of cheese or something. A bit of cheese. I get a bit of uh, a bit of beef or a turkey and I wrap it in a piece of cheese if I get hungry. That's It's good, man. It's good. I love Gina Carano. So do I. Never met her, but I'm a fan. So why do you eat chicken sausages instead of pork? I'll tell you why, buddy. Mr. Smart Ass. Because there's less shit in them. Sausages, these processed sausages, there's all kinds of crap in them. It's not because of the fat, it's because of the, the ones that I have access to where, I, my, where my wife shops. When you look at all the ingredients in the sausages, there's all kinds of bullshit. Uh, the chicken sausages have way less. So there you go. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Huge erection. Great guy. Never met him. Me neither. All right. You've got, how long left? You've got seven minutes, guys. Would be a dream. Who would be a dream karate combat opponent? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Coach G. I tell my kids I could get Mike Bisping to say hi to me. Ryan Buckner. Hello, brother. Hello to your children. Have a great weekend. Ricky Luke won by TKO. He did. Professional Sports Enterprise says, just super chatted you a little while ago and you said that you already read it. That wasn't me. That was my first time super chatting to you today. Well, Professional Sports Enterprise, I do apologize. Well, I've got that on here twice. Well, my bad. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Oh dear, you're a dickhead. I jump on a mic's talking about sausages. What's going on here? Can't get enough of a good sausage, mate. So, all right. So UFC 300, you've got Conor McGregor losing to Michael Chandler. You've got Khalil Roundtree beating Jamal Hill. I wouldn't discount Jamal Hill just like that. 
Brisbane, why do you need to fight to lose the other round? I don't need to fight. I don't need to fight. It's just sometimes you get the itch. You know what I mean? So uh, I didn't skip your super chat, Ray Williams. If I did, I bloody apologize. Here's another one here. Without Volk, would Max be the greatest of all time right now? Yeah, well, I don't know about greatest of all time. He'd certainly be the greatest featherweight of all time. And he still might have, you know, a claim to that, as crazy as that sounds. Volkanovski beat him three times, so to even say those words sounds nonsensical. But Max is having a phenomenal career, defended the belt a bunch of times, beat some legends. It's just that they all have their times, like Jose Aldo had his time, Max Holloway had his time, Volkanovski had his time. Okay, I mean, Jose Aldo, you could say is the greatest of all time at that weight class, but then Max Holloway beat him a couple of times. You know what I mean? It's because they all come in, in succession after one another, after their reigns. And now and now it's the time of Elia Taporia. But I think what Max is doing, going up to 155, beating Justin Gagey like that, and he's probably going to get to fight Ilya Taporia next, I would have thought. In fact, John, put a poll up on that. Who would you rather see? Taporia versus Holloway or Taporia versus Volkanovski for a second time? I'm a massive fan of Volkanovski. You can't not be. You can't not like Volkanovski. He's just a legend. Um, but I'm not going to say my appetite for Holloway and Taporia is a bit stronger right now just based on that fight. So Holloway versus Taporia, who do you got? I mean, I would have said Taporia, but look at what he just did against Justin Gagey. <laughs> do you know what I mean? All right, Volk is the featherweight goat. Yeah, hey, listen, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. They're all just opinions. Volk probably is the featherweight goat, but so is Holloway and so is Aldo. You know what I mean? So there's no right or wrong answer. Hi, Mike. Say peanuts without the T. <laughs> penis. There you go. Did that give you everything you wanted? Did that give you the childish look? that you were looking for. Staylor says, Bisping, have I ever had depression? No, I don't think I have. I've had bad days. I think we've all had bad days. And I think sometimes, I think sometimes people are a little bit too quick. And, I, and I'm saying this from a completely ignorant standpoint, so don't take any notice. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But obviously with mental health having such a, Focus these days, and rightly so, and rightly so. I think some people are quick to jump on that bandwagon. We all have ups and downs in life. We all have times where we're not in the best mood. We all have periods of what we might label as depression, sad days, blue days, going through some stuff, personal issues and stuff like that. I don't think you can automatically just label that as depression. You could say, I'm just, I'm not in a good place right now. I'm, I'm going through it. I've split up with my girlfriend. I've lost my job. I don't know what my path is in life. Right? I've just lost my world title fight, which you, you shouldn't feel sorry for yourself. You were able to become a champion. You know what I mean? So I think people are a little quick with the depression thing, even though I do think it's a great thing that mental health gets the, the, the focus that it should. And if people are actually depressed, yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying, Billy the Kid. He says, depression isn't a bad day, Mike. I know. That's what I'm saying. If you listen to the words coming out of my fucking mouth, mate, that's what I'm saying. It's not depression when people have a bad day. You know what I'm saying? Because I see people on social media that I know. People that I know going, oh, I'm really going through a spell of depression right now. I'm like, no, you're not. You're fucking hungover. I saw you a few days ago on the last show. I saw you on Facebook. You know, and then a few days later, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm really depressed right now. You know, so some people, I think, use it for a bit of sympathy. You know, but that, but of course, if people are depressed and they need to get the help and they need to speak to people, of course, because it's not a laughing matter and suicide is not a laughing matter. I'm just saying there is people out there that are quick to jump on that bandwagon. And if you can't see that and you don't agree with that, then take your fucking head out the sand. Depression is an excuse of why they don't like how their life is playing out. Correct. And often the, the, the conspiracy theorists are the same way. Conspiracy theorists, they say the same shit. You know what I mean? Life isn't panning out the way they did, so... It's a conspiracy against me. Your career is so inspiring. You're my favorite commentator. Keep up your work. It's a pleasure. Well, thank you, Alucard. I appreciate that, brother. This is water with salt in. 
There's a guy on Instagram, James Nikolai D'Antonio, I think he is. Uh, depression is being broke. Yeah, you're right, Emperor Palpatine, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, listen, it's depressing as hell being broke. It's so depressing. It's not clinical depression, but it is depressing. When I, I And that's what motivates me in life. That's, that's what made me become a fighter. Purely, plain and simple for financial reasons. Because I was sick of being fucking broke. I was sick of it. Having no money. Having shitty clothes. Driving a crappy car. Not being able to go on holiday. Not being able to fucking do good shit with the kids. Do you know what I mean? I was like, there's got to be more to life than this. So yeah, and it it does it does get depressing, but not depression. The two different things. See, it gets depressing, yeah. And it, but you know what? Also, at the same time, also at the same time, my wife and I say this. They were some of the happiest days in our life. It gets frustrating. It gets annoying. But it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? You've still got your health and all the rest of it. But yeah, of course, it can get you down. And it used to cause a lot of arguments in our house. <laughs> not arguments. You know, uh, bickering, bickering, not arguments, bickering. You know what I mean? I was talking about this on my podcast the other day, like Rebecca would go do, she, she'd go to uh, the supermarket and come back with all like the branded cleaners and stuff like that. I'm like, why don't you just get the generic shit? It's way cheaper. So just stupid little things like that. Uh, so yeah, I, it, 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 don't let it get you down though. There's always tomorrow, mate. You got to get off your ass and work hard. No one else is going to do it. you got to do it. It's your life. You know, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Do you want to be something? Do you want to sit around and feel sorry for yourself? Or are you going to do something about it? What happens between you and Rampage? Are you still friends? Yeah, I've got respect for Rampage. That's private, mate. None of your business. I'm not going to get into it. We used to be close friends. Now we're not, you know. Bisping argues with his wife. News article. Yeah, exactly. That's how it works, isn't it? Ariane Tiwari. Anything you say. How's the new eye, Michael Bispin? I haven't got it yet. They're still painting. This is the old one. And you're right, mate. Health is wealth. Joe Franzinelli. That's the most important thing. Your health is the most important thing above everything else. Don't worry about chasing the almighty dollar constantly. You need money to survive. But also, your health is the most invaluable, the most valuable asset. How was it training with Michael Hearn? It was great. Really, really good. I learned quite a lot. Michael Hearn, of course, a very uh, well-known bodybuilder. Does a bit of acting as well. Uh, has a good YouTube channel if you're interested in bodybuilding and lifting weights. So give him a follow. Great guy. What kind of beer do I drink? I don't drink a lot of beer these days, if I'm honest. Really don't. Uh, I do like... when I First time I had a beer was yesterday. I had two beers for the first time in a very, very long time. Uh, not saying the, the first time I had a drink in a while. I had a drink last night. I had a vodka tonic. But uh, first time I had a beer was yesterday for a long time. I went out for an early dinner, a late lunch with the family. We went to a sushi place, Sapporo. Ice cold Sapporo in an ice cold glass, in a frosted glass. <sighs> oh, come on. It's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Have fun with the kid. I'm out. Ryan Buckner, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm about to leave as well. It's one minute. One, one hour and three. So I'm about to jump off in a second myself, guys. Uh, when is Red Sonja coming out? I'm not sure. Red Sonja, I believe, end of summer, it will be out. I know there's a deadline for when it gets passed to the distributioners, which is in July. So late summer, Red Sonja will be out. I've got a big part in that one. I enjoyed working with everybody there. Um, also got Den of Thieves 2 coming out. And I've actually got... My first lead role in a movie coming up. I can't say too much more about it other than that, but I'm very, very excited. And you're going to see me slimming down. Oh, I'm going to be back down to 185. Just you wait and see. Let's go. What's up with your neck? You keep stretching it. Yeah, it's, I'm in pain, mate. I'm in pain. I'm in pain 24-7 with my neck. But it doesn't stop me doing anything. Just reminding you, Terry Smiles. Reminding me of what? Do a movie with Seagal. You're good, bro. <laughs> right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. Enjoy your weekends. Well done to Luke Rockhold. Well done to Karate Combat. 
Joe Schilling and everybody involved looked like an incredible event. Michael, Weetabix or shredded wheat? Weetabix all day long, even though I don't eat cereal. I'm not a child. Champ, how do I make more money now? Champ, do you make more, more money now than when you were fighting? I make a very good living. I make a good living. So we're not going to get into specifics. Um, and we'll end on this one. Alexander Chandosavarsky, you are a true inspiration and a great champion. I mean, that seems like a great place to leave. Thank you all for watching. Hope you well. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I might come back with a live stream of Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, or I might be down at the beach with the family. That remains to be seen. You guys take care. All the best. Thank you for supporting.